when we are in this life and we have hope in Jesus our hope is not to be prosperous and have all the things and the trappings that people run after but just disappear and leave you unsatisfied what we want is rest forever from evil and this will come through Jesus what is in it for us is we look Hello everyone and thank you for joining us once again at The Biblical Perspective on YouTube. We're continuing on our series of studies within the book of Hebrews. But today we're on um, study number 11, which is entitled Jesus, Author and Perfecter of Our Faith. If you're new here to The Biblical Perspective, please do subscribe um, because we upload two videos every week to help you in your understanding and study of God's Word. And also as well, please thumbs up this video and also press the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. So definitely do subscribe if you've not done so before. And um, the majority of our, of our viewers and those of you do come from people who do not subscribe. So do subscribe so that you'll continue to be blessed by our studies. So um, you're with myself, Colleen, and with Pedro, um, and we'll be taking the Bible study on um, the book of Hebrews with you today. And um, before we go any further, I'm going to start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that we have once again to study your word. Lord, I pray that we will continue to study, we will continue to understand, we'll continue to gain insight so that we will know your desire for us in every aspect of our life. Lord, help us to live according to your word and according to the calling that you have on each and every one of our lives. I ask these things in your precious and holy name, dear Lord. Amen. Amen. So, Pedro, I'm going to get straight into the study because we often run out of time. So, um, study number um, 11, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So, I wanted to kick this off by actually reading that text. And I just wanted you to um, explain um, what Hebrews 2, e Hebrews 12 verse 2 means and what's the actual function of, of this text. So, um, for those of you who are reading with us at home, it's Hebrews 12. Um, verse 2 and I'm reading from the King James Version and it says looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God so how do we understand this and you did ask the, about the function yes of, of this text um, what I can say from this is it would seem to me that this text is exposing and explaining the centrality of Jesus to the concept of faith. Right, okay. And when, when I say the concept of faith, you could object by saying, well, faith preceded Jesus in the sense that Jesus came on earth as in the incarnation, yes. but faith had been running for a long time before that. And you could even tell me, uh, I have a proof for that in Hebrews chapter 11, when we talk about all these people who exercised faith. But here, it still seems that in this text, Jesus is made the center of faith even though the concept of faith mm -hmm. worked before he came on this earth. Are you with me? Yes. Now, if you read verse 1 of the same chapter. Okay, so that's Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse, verse one. 1. And then read 1 and 2 for me, please. Two. And it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, those two texts, you can't separate them. You try it, but I wouldn't allow that. <laughs> this is what we are seeing. The centrality of Jesus through the salvation process. That's yes. the entire book of Hebrews. But now, particularly talking about faith, which is a major component of the process of salvation. We are saved by grace through, through faith. faith. Yes. And the text is making, that, that was Ephesians 2, um, verse 10, yeah? Or 8, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesus is made the center of that. Now, it is interesting to notice that this is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, but that comes just after Hebrews 11. Yes. And Hebrews 11 begins by a definition of what faith is, right? Yes, it does. So, um, and then it goes on to give you a whole list of people who exerted or exercises or exercised faith and what the result was and then it tells you everything culminates in Jesus because he is the author yes and the finisher the finisher of faith do you see that this is putting together Jesus and faith inseparably. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, if you read for me, Hebrews chapter 11, we'll go, we're going to go to the end of, of the chapter, verses 39 and 40, please. Okay, Hebrews 11, 39 and 40, and it says, And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise, God having provided some better things for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. These people lived thousands of years before Jesus. Yes. For some they of did. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But the text in Hebrews, after you read the end of um, 11, goes on to say, in the same way we should look unto Jesus. The starter, yes. the initiator, the beginner, the author of faith. Now, how do you reconcile that? It's quite straightforward. It is to say, even though these people lived, and in fact, it would be good. We don't have time to do that now. But it would be good to go and read the mm. entire chapter 11 and then it would be very clear to us that even though these people lived long before Jesus, their faith was in Jesus. Yes. Even though they did not know it. That's why the entire book of Hebrews is... Um, making the effort to make Jesus the center of everything and it tells us about the the found from the foundation of the world we, we had that in one of our studies the sacrifice of Jesus was conceived and realized at the end that's why the book of Hebrews begins by saying now in these last days are you with me? Yes. So even though they did not know Jesus particularly, um, the concept of faith is inseparable from the whole concept of salvation in Christ that was realized in Jesus. You with me? Yes. yes. So um, th their faith could only be complete in Jesus. Yes. Even if they did not know him. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. But like, um, 
where we are today we have like the old and the new testament and we we see a full picture and we understand clearly more so than the people in for example um hebrews 11 that they spoke about we more clearly understand who jesus is and his role but how was um how could jesus initiate faith in the people of chapter 11 when they did not know everything about him like they did did not know what we know now like we have the new testament we we see like jesus's life this is where jesus god is a, a mastermind god has never been secretive about the redemption of humanity in fact all the people we have in this chapter 11 who lived by faith and triumphed by faith and by the way the text says none of them obtained what they had faith in mm -hmm. which means again for for them to obtain the object of their faith fully they need to look at jesus but what i'm saying is all these people lived after genesis 3 15. you remember genesis 3 15 what it said it said that the posterity of the woman will crush the head of the snake yes. or the serpent so the the redemption of humanity has never been a secret from the beginning mm. god has said this is what he would do and all the generations who lived including the people in chapter 11 the Bible is trying to tell us that the writer of the book of Hebrews if you read the whole chapter is is trying to tell us that these people lived in the expectation of that salvation mm -hmm. but that salvation has always been in Christ and through Christ alone so how could they have faith in the salvation of God if Jesus is not involved, when Jesus is central to the whole process? Are you with me? Yes. So Jesus is the initiator of that faith in him, even though they don't know him and i like you now the definition of faith employs the concept of hope yes, are you with does, me yeah what is what is what is the value of hope in faith it's everything mm. The value of hope in faith is everything because faith is the assurance of things you hope for. Yes. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Now, if you read for me that definition in Hebrews um, 11, verse 1, just read it. We spoke about it. Just read it for me now. Please. Okay, so 11.1 um, says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hope. Hope. Yes. So now let me ask you a question. Why would you think that um, most people would agree that Abraham is a major character in the list of people who were presented as having lived by faith? in Hebrews chapter 11. Why do you think most people would agree that Abraham is a major character in that list? Yes, um, it's because of um, obviously um, what he did in regards to Isaac and also his, his life. He was the first prophet, he's the first um, mention of the word prophet and it was by God himself. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. If you go to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 to 19, for me, please. And we were trying to answer your question. Um, how is it that Jesus um, initiated faith in these people when these people lived long before him? 
That's a demonstration and that will answer the question also how this Abraham is a major character in this list. Okay, so Hebrews eleven seventeen to 19, and it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, a, a, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Okay, that's what you were saying. We didn't read the whole thing, but you were saying the, the typology that there is between um, Abraham's actions, particularly in offering the substitution offering uh, that subsequently followed of Isaac by the, the ram. All this pointed to Jesus. Um, but what did Jesus say about Abraham? That, that's Abraham is thousands of years before Jesus. Yeah, we're trying to answer the question, how does Jesus initiate faith in people who lived so long before him? And we just took the example of Abraham. Can we go to John chapter 8, verse 56, please? Abraham lived so long. So what is his connection with Jesus in this whole faith concept? Um, John 8, 56 says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Who is saying this? It's Jesus. Now, do you think Jesus is telling the truth? Yes, I do. Jesus is saying, Your father Abraham saw what? My day. My day. What is he saying? If you read the whole chapter of faith and you come to the part of Abraham, there is a part where he says, Abraham lived on this earth as a stranger because he was looking for a city that, would, that was not built by men. He had a hope in him that went beyond the circumstances of living on this earth. Earth. And now Jesus comes and says, he saw my day and he rejoiced. Yes. Do you think that Abraham had in him a hope, which is the hope of salvation that Jesus himself initiated in him that carried him through the experiences of life that he had and which were so typical to what Jesus himself was going to come and do? Yes, I do. So who gave him that vision? Who gave him that hope? Mm, it was God himself. Is Jesus God? Yes. So it is Jesus the initiator of that faith in this major character that we find in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, who is Abraham. You see the purpose of faith. Yet the Bible says at the end of chapter 11 that they did not receive what they were hoping for. The Bible does say this. So the, the, the purpose of faith in its entirety the purpose is to bring to completion the, the hope that God himself initiated in people from Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, where for the first time he made that promise that it won't always be mm. the way it has become, but the Son of God will deliver humanity from the power of darkness through his sacrifice. In that sense, Jesus, who is God, who realizes this plan, is the initiator of that hope, therefore, of that faith.
Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So Jesus started the faith that these people, he started the faith business in these people. He started the redemption business in these people. He started the hope business in these people. And in that sense, he is the founder yes. of faith. Yes, the author. The author. The, the, the word there, if, if you really want to have an appropriate word when it says the author, the, the most appropriate word is founder okay. of faith. Mm. He is the founder of faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, what about this where it talks about like the perfecter of our faith or the finisher of our faith? How do we, can we somehow dive a little deeper into understanding Absolutely, that. Absolutely, because we saw he was the founder and yes. verse 2 of chapter 12 says he is the founder or the author or the initiator but also the finisher mm -hmm. of our faith. Okay, so your question is legitimate and let's attempt to answer it. Yes. If we go now, we will come back to Hebrews but let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verses 24 and 25 and then we will go back to Hebrews. Um, Romans 8 24 and 25 says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then we do have patience. <coughs> patience wait for it. You remember that the definition of faith in, in Hebrews 1 that starts this whole chapter in which we find Abraham involves heavily hope. Now, Paul is telling you in this text that you can't have, you can't have hope about something that is already there. That you can see, yeah. So, hope by definition is towards something that has not come. Yes, something unseen. Something that you're waiting for. Mm -hmm. If you wait for something that is already there, you're no longer waiting because it's there, it's materialized. So hope also brings you or focuses you to the end. Are you with me? In the concept of hope, there is the concept of looking towards the end, mm -hmm. which is the fulfillment. Yeah, it's actually receiving that thing that you actually hope for. So, what are we waiting for? Now, we're waiting for complete salvation. He says we are saved in hope. That means there is a completion to our salvation that has not come. No. The completion of our salvation has not come and we are waiting for it. How will it, will it come? Who will bring it? It's got to be Jesus. The it finisher, has to be Jesus. The finisher of our faith. It has to be Jesus. So in that sense now, he will be the one accomplishing. He will be the one completing. Once he has finished the intercession that he is making in the heavenly places, we read that in, in the book of Hebrews that says that he will come to take those who are waiting for him. When he has finished, he will have to bring this hope to completion. In that sense, he is the finisher mm. of our faith because it brings the reality of salvation into complete fulfillment. And these people who lived thousands of years before us yet through faith, yeah. hoped, for that salvation, when Jesus comes, Jesus initiated that hope yes, in them. He did. It is definitely Jesus that will finish it when he brings rest into this universe for them. Yes, and for us. And for us and everybody else mm -hmm. in between. Now, if you can also, well, 
let, let, let me leave it there. Maybe you have another question for me. Yeah, so um, I just wanted, because we're coming to, yeah. the, to the close of the, um, the study now, and I just wanted to find out about um, what's really in this for us. Everything is in it for us. If you read again the, uh, the definition of what faith is, that begins chapter 11. Yeah, but read the whole chapter after that, since we don't have time for that. Let's just go to the end of this chapter, 35 to 40. For me, please. Hebrews. You've read verse Hebrews 11. Okay. You've read uh, verse 39 and 40 at, uh, at some point. Now let's go back and read from 35 to 40. 35 to 40. It says, um, Women receive their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mocking and scorching, ye moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sworn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. What is in it for us? Is that a happy reading? All the things that you That's read no, about these people. No, it's not a happy reading. In much the same way today, it's not a happy life that we're living on this earth. These people did not obtain, according to what the text says, they did not obtain what they were hoping for, which is complete rest and deliverance from evil in this world. No. And they went through terrible experiences. What is in it for us? We are going through the same things here. When we are in this life, and we have hope in Jesus. Our hope is not to be prosperous and have all the things and the trappings that people run after but just disappear and leave you unsatisfied. What we want is rest forever from evil. And this will come through Jesus. What is in it for us is we look at these people who whom we call the heroes of faith, but don't necessarily want to live the life they, le they lived no, because don't. look at what happened to them. Yeah. What is in it for us is to understand that although they went through that experience and we might go through the same, Jesus will bring to completion for them and for, for us. us what we have been hoping for. He will be the initiator. Yes. He has been. He, has he will been. also be the, the finisher. finisher. Therefore, looking unto Jesus, yes. let's run the race. Mm -hmm. Like verse 2 is saying, are you with me? Yes. That is what is in it for us. The race is on. Let's win it. Mm -hmm in Jesus. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for, for that study. That was excellent. I hope um, you were all blessed and please um, go over this video again um, and leave any comments that you have or questions in the comment section below. We endeavor to answer all of the questions if you do have any questions about this study so also don't forget to subscribe and like this video and we will see you next week for another study with the biblical perspective thank you